Hello, everyone. My name is Preston Dennett, and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. Today's episode is called The Malibu Anomaly. Is this an undersea UFO base? The Malibu Anomaly is an unusual and almost artificial looking structure located off the coast of Malibu in Southern California. It has received a lot of attention in the media and on the internet as a possible undersea UFO base. So that's what this episode is about today. I want to take a deep dive into all the evidence surrounding this so-called Malibu anomaly and see if we can figure out if it is an artificial structure and if this is evidence of an undersea UFO base or the base itself. So I can tell you that I got involved in this field back in 1986 and almost immediately began to receive reports of UFOs and USOs, unidentified submersible objects, in this area. And what I found was most all of the major Southern California UFO researchers knew about this area and considered it a major hot spot. Pioneering Southern California-based researcher Anne Druffel was probably the first to recognize this area as a hot spot, and she's collected and investigated many encounters. So has Bill Hamilton. So has Yvonne Smith, Robert Stanley, Barbara Lamb, uh, many researchers in this area have collected accounts from this one particular stretch of water. The stretch of water is known as the Santa Catalina San Pedro Channel. It's a sharply defined area with a huge number of UFO and USO accounts. And when I began to re receive reports myself, I started to collect them because it was clear to me that there was something very unusual going on in this area. And that was my first real data point pointing towards the possibility of an undersea USO base. It was the huge number of reports in this sharply defined area stretching back over a hundred years. The second real data point was that some of these encounters involved not one or two objects, but dozens. Many people have reported 10, 20, 30, even 40 objects coming up out of the water. And in fact, I have a couple of cases involving more than 100 objects. And that's when I really began to wonder, could there be some sort of an undersea base in this area? Because if there wasn't, there was certainly a parking lot filled with UFOs and USOs. I also started to receive reports from abductees, contactees, who told me that they believed there might be a UFO base. And in fact, a couple of them said that they believed they were actually taken inside this base. So that was another data point that I'll get into in just a bit. I can say that all the locals in this area, well, most of them, uh, certainly know about the activity in this area. It's very well known. In fact, it's so active that there is quite a few photograph, photographs taken of UFOs, USOs, in this area. Not one or two, but nearly a dozen cases of people who've been able to photograph UFOs uh, right in this same exact area. So these were all these data points that uh, I began to collect, which really made me wonder if there was an undersea UFO base. Mind you, this was well before the so-called Malibu anomaly was discovered. And uh, back in 2006, I wrote an article for Fate magazine titled, is there an undersea UFO base off the California coast? To my surprise and delight, the editors at Fate Magazine put it on the cover. The article itself went viral and was published all over the internet 
and even in newspapers, and it led to a series of interviews. I started speaking on this subject, and the History Channel called me up and asked me to be a part of their show, Deep Sea UFOs. It was very successful, so they called me back for Deep Sea UFOs 2 and other television programs, and this, of course, led to more reports coming in. I eventually collected 150-some reports of UFOs and USOs, and I plotted them all on a map. And uh, as I looked at these uh, dots on the map showing the distribution of these UFOs and USOs, it became clear to me that they were clustered all in this one area, the Santa Catalina Channel, but particularly off the coast of Malibu. And I thought to myself, well, you know, if there is an undersea base in this area, it's probably somewhere off the coast of Malibu. And again, this is before the so-called Malibu anomaly was discovered. Uh, the first person to, that I could find to actually uh, mention the possibility of an undersea base was not me, it was Robert Stanley, a Southern California-based researcher. He grew up in Malibu. He's the editor of the now-defunct magazine Unicus, and he was the first to mention the possibility of an undersea UFO base. In an article for his magazine, Unicus, published in 1994, Robert Stanley wrote, and I quote, even in the 60s, families were going down to the beach and waiting for a UFO to pass by. Many times I have wondered about the possibility of a facility being located underwater where the Valley of Mu now rests. There have been many sightings by military and civilian sources of UFOs entering and leaving the ocean in that area. It's possible they also have something going on deep inside the mountains. So yeah, he's absolutely the first to talk about the possibility of a base. He had been very interested in unusual geological formations in the Santa Monica Mountains. And later, he would be the first to discover the actual Malibu anomaly itself. But before that, I was receiving reports of people who had been taken, apparently, inside an underground base in this area. I'd talked to many abductees and contactees who'd been taken on board UFOs, but a few of them says that, said that they were taken into what appeared to be an underground area. For me, the most compelling case of this, time, this kind comes from a gentleman I'll call Paul Nelson. That's a pseudonym. Uh, I interviewed him because he had a very unusual experience on Catalina Island when he was just a young teenager. Today, Paul is a medical doctor, a private pilot, so he's a really good witness. He does not want his name associated with this experience, so he is anonymous. But way back in 1967, when Paul was 12 years old, he and his family took a vacation on Catalina Island and Paul and his best friend were on a boat in Avalon Harbor when they experienced a period of missing time. As Paul says, It was just after dark, far away from sleep time. We sat down, got our comic books open, and then instantly we were unconscious. The next thing we realized, it was morning. At the time, Paul and his friend didn't know what had happened, they just could not believe they had fallen asleep because they were super excited to read their new comic books. It made no sense to them. Interestingly, it was just two weeks later, Paul had another unusual experience in his home in Tarzana in which he saw the shadow of what appeared to be a gray type being on the wall of the hallway in his house. But it wasn't until he was an adult that he found out about the UFO phenomena that he connected the dots and realized that this could be related to what he had experienced. And he eventually went under hypnotic regression. And under this hypnotic regression, he was taken back to that 1967 incident on Catalina Island 
and he recalled being taken not into a UFO, but into what appears to be an underground area. And I'll just let Paul describe what he recalls. As he says, I was taken into a round walled room. It seemed to me more underground than it did on board a ship. The walls had kind of a rock-like facet to them. And I was on a table. There were some machines on the walls. The beings weren't the typical greys. They were more like the praying mantis type. The eyes were slightly bigger than what is seen in the typical small grey and a little more insectoid-like. They wore tight-fitting uniforms, jumpsuit-like things. I think there was one in that bunch that had a tunic-type thing, more looser fitting over it. Paul recalled that he was just told to sit on a bench and wait while his friend was taken into another chamber and apparently examined. Paul felt no fear. He wasn't the target of interest. It was his friend. Uh, but for him, it was just a very interesting experience. And I found it fascinating because it doesn't sound like he was inside a UFO. And there are a few other cases where people report this sort of thing. Another case comes from well-known abductee Kim Carlsberg. Kim Carlsberg is a professional photographer. She worked on the television series Baywatch and back in 1988 started to have UFO sightings and onboard UFO encounters, some of which she remembered, some of which were shrouded in missing time. Uh, this was quite frightening for her. These involved uh, examinations by gray type extraterrestrials. It was not a pleasant experience for her. But she did have one experience in 1992 where she was taken to a vast auditorium area which she didn't say specifically was underground, but uh, certainly could have been just given the size of this room. And as Kim says, I woke up in a lobby where many human beings were milling around. They reminded me of patients waiting to endure their turn in a dentist chair. She said it looked very much like an auditorium. And she was told by the ETs that they were all being prepared for something. So that's another case. A third case comes from UFO researcher Debbie Ziegelmeyer, who has been studying USO accounts for several years. She interviewed a Southern California-based abductee by the name of Linda Porter who claimed to be taken to an underground base when she was just a teenager. And I will just quote Linda Porter in her own words and let her describe what she experienced. As Linda Porter says, I was supposedly taken to an underground base off the coast of California. For some reason, I was led to believe it was in the Santa Barbara area. If you were standing on sand at the bottom of the ocean, where this place was at, all you could see is what looks like a silver submarine conning tower coming up out of the sand. It would probably be the height of a two or three story building. I was told this tower thing was camouflaged by an electronic net of some kind that renders it invisible. And they also have something around it that seems to repel people and fish. Inside the building, the floors and the walls and the ceiling were all of a silver-gray color. There was a lot of light. Linda also reports that she saw many doorways, and on top of each doorway there was strange writing which looked like Arabic or maybe Egyptian hieroglyphics. So there's a third case. So th these were the data points that really had me wondering, could there be an undersea base off the Southern California coast. Uh, Robert Stanley had been particularly interested in unusual geological formations in the Santa Monica Mountains and wondered if these were perhaps evidence of an ancient civilization known as Mu. And he first started looking at all the structures above the water on, in the Santa Monica Mountains itself, but eventually extended his research into unusual structures beneath the ocean's surface. And using Google Maps, 
he made a very interesting discovery back in 2009. Uh, he saw what we now know to be the Malibu anomaly. And uh, back then, there were no applications to look sort of at a different angle, so you could only look at it from above. But what he saw was this extremely large flat area right off the coast of Malibu. And uh, as he writes, this mound looks man-made and is perfectly flat on top. It is very large and is located due west of the ruins on Boney Ridge. To me, this mound-shaped object appeared to be an artificial ancient platform that is now under the water. In 2010, I decided to pin this strange underwater mound in Malibu on Google Earth for future reference. However, at that time, I didn't think it was connected to the well-documented UFO and USO activity in the area, which I had experienced many times near Point Magoo by myself and with friends. In, two th in 2010, I also noticed what appeared to be columns at the base of the mound, but I could not see the area in any detail. Uh, Robert Stanley knew about my research. I had contributed to uh, Unicus magazine and was collecting these underwater reports for my book, First UFOs Over California. And he actually emailed me and told me about this strange anomaly off the Southern California coast. Uh, I thought to myself, well, that's interesting. <laughs> because it did look artificial. And if you look around this area, there's nothing quite like it. Uh, at the time, I didn't know really what to think of it. But it was not long after this that this anomaly began to really get a lot more attention. On January 21st, 2013, I received an email from a gentleman who identified himself as Maxwell, and he sent me a Google link showing this massive structure. And he wrote in his email to me, here's something right off the Southern California coast, south of Point Magoo. It's three miles offshore. Zoom in on it and notice the entry areas. There are many underwater structures, including huge machines scraping the ocean floor. So this was intriguing to me because not only did the structure have a very smooth, flat top, but you could see what appeared to be columns and what looked like a tunnel. By this point, I had received reports that there were tunnels crisscrossing the United States and one leading from Area 51 in Nevada to Edwards Air Force Base in the high deserts of Southern California all the way to the Santa Catalina Channel. I thought, wow, perhaps this is the tunnel that I've been informed about, or perhaps this is the actual undersea UFO base itself, because it was located almost exactly where I had predicted there might be an undersea base. So I was very much intrigued. But this whole story caught fire in 2014 when radio host Jimmy Church uh, was also contacted by Maxwell and together they started to look more deeply into this structure and using Google applications they looked at this base from various angles and obtained images of what definitely appears to be huge columns or pillars and a deep, dark tunnel leading into the uh, coastline there. And uh, he published these images along with a little blog post, and it went viral. And uh, he called me up, and because uh, he knew about my research into this area as well, and uh, had me on his radio show. On 
May 25th, 2014, I appeared on episode 67 of Fade to Black and discussed this Malibu anomaly with Jimmy Church. And uh, when he started talking about the name Maxwell, it rang a bell and I looked back in my emails and I saw, sure enough, this was the same guy who had contacted me a few years earlier. But credit does have to be given to Jimmy Church for really publicizing this Malibu anomaly and making it famous. Uh, absolutely, Robert Stanley was the one who I think first discovered it as near as I can tell. But Jimmy Church was the one who made it famous because on May 15th, 2014, uh, author Mark D. Kovar released a press statement which said in part, and I quote, a massive underwater entrance has been discovered off of the Malibu, California coast at Point Doom, which appears to be the holy grail of USO UFO researchers that have been looking for it over the last 40 years. The plateau structure is 1.35 miles by 2.45 miles wide and 6 miles from land. And the entrance between the support pillars is 2,745 feet wide and 630 feet tall. It also has what looks like a total nuclear bomb-proof ceiling that is 500 feet thick. The discovery was made by Maxwell, Dale Romero, and Jimmy Church, host of Fade to Black, on the Dark Matter Radio Network on Monday, May 12, 2014, and announced on Facebook, Twitter, and Church's radio program the following day. The underwater base has been a mystery for many years with hundreds of UFO, USO sightings, many with photographs, but the entrance of the base has remained elusive until now. So the coordinates of the base are 34 degrees, 123.31 north, 118 degrees, 59, 45.64 west, which is very close to the center of the activity. And in Jimmy Church's YouTube post about the anomaly, he writes, the structure itself doesn't fit in with its natural surroundings. This discovery was made by Maxwell, Dale Romero, and myself two weeks ago. This has been the center, the hub, of USO UFO activity going back 40 years. Thousands of witnesses going up and down the coast. The residents here just pull up lawn chairs and watch the lights come in and out of the water all day long. It's what they do. Now, is this proof of an entrance to something inland? We don't know. It could be natural. It could be 10,000 years old. It could be 100 years old. We don't know. Why hasn't it been investigated or revealed until now? We don't know. So this was, in fact, discovered by Robert Stanley, but Jimmy Church was the one who made it super famous. And in fact, after publicizing this, his... Uh, YouTube post eventually garnered well over 370,000 views, and this Malibu anomaly became world famous and was the talk of the UFO community for quite some time and still is. And uh, a lot of people started to come forth with information about what they knew. Uh, one contactee wrote that it was a rogue Pleiadian base. And uh, other whistleblowers started to come out saying that this was something the military was well aware of and that there were, in fact, underground bases in this area. So the question is, is this actually a natural formation or not? And, of course, there are people on both sides of the fence. Um, some are debunkers saying, no, this is not real, or skeptics who do not believe it, and others are absolutely convinced. 
Uh, I'm a bit on the fence about it. I want to remain objective because honestly, I don't know. But just looking at the structure, it does look unusual. But is this natural or is it not? And how much can we trust these Google images? So a lot of people really started to question these images. And one of the one researcher who looked into it quite deeply is researcher Lee Spiegel. He interviewed a lot of the people involved and wrote an article for the Huffington Post, which was somewhat skeptical in tone, but did leave the possibility open that this was in fact a legitimate undersea base. The article begins, and I quote, A little more than six miles off the coast of Point Doom, Malibu, California, an unusual looking structure sits on the seabed floor. Based on images obtained on Google Earth, the oval-shaped object has a huge flat top and what appears to be pillars or columns that seem to reveal the entrance to a dark inner place. The anomaly, for the moment we'll call it that, is approximately 2,000 feet below the surface of the water, measuring nearly three miles wide. What exactly is this thing? Lee Spiegel interviewed Jimmy Church, and Jimmy Church uh, is quoted as saying, My first impression was that it was Greek. It looked artificial and didn't look natural. It just stands out that it has to be some kind of roof. It's not unlike a domed stadium or a covered indoor racetrack or an Olympic arena. It's got that feel to it. But Spiegel went and got interviews from skeptics uh, who are convinced that it is absolutely a natural formation. He contacted earthquake geologist David Schwartz of the U.S. Geological Survey, who was skeptical that this was an artificial construct. And as David Schwartz says, and I quote, I think it's natural and is part of the continental shelf. It's just a complicated part of what's now offshore that has seen some erosion and maybe slumping when perhaps this was partially exposed when the sea level was lower. This is a really major earthquake area, and perhaps some of these features are a result of slope failures due to shaking. There's no flag under the water that says, I'm the entrance to an alien base. There's nothing unnatural looking about it. It's just showing some sort of variation in the offshore coastal morphology. So this Malibu anomaly is actually known as Sycamore Knoll, which is in fact a thrust fault. And according to David Schwartz of the U.S. Geological Survey, this is in fact a natural formation. Lee Spiegel also interviewed John Anthony West, who is an Egyptologist who has studied ancient formations. Uh, he does, he's not a UFO researcher by any means, but is familiar with large stone structures. And according to Egyptologist John Anthony West, and I quote, My first reaction, knowing that it was 2,000 feet under the water, was that under no circumstances could it in fact be artificial, man-made. It doesn't look at all man-made. It has what looks like pillars there, but they're unevenly spaced. And then to the right, you see other seeming pillars that are still attached actually to the bedrock in the process of forming. So West is believes that this is a natural geological formation. Finally, Lee Spiegel contacted FBI agent, former FBI agent, if there is such a thing, Ben Hansen. And Ben Hansen uh, provided Google images of the base from different angles, uh, which showed this structure 
with no tunnel and what appears to be solid walls. And he was also skeptical that this was anything artificial. Now here's the crux of the problem. We have different images, some of which clearly show a tunnel and some which don't. So how do you choose between them? Which ones are accurate? It's very hard to say. You can't very well choose one over the other and still be objective about this. We have to examine all the evidence. Uh, but according to Hansen, these Google images are not necessarily reliable. As he says, the dark areas that people are saying look like the inside of the base really start to look just like shadings of indentations to the shelf. And the pillars are now represented as jagged ridges. We're dealing with limited information to render the graphic because we can see it evidenced in the disparity of image quality between the anomaly and the areas immediately surrounding it. The blurry sections and jagged edges obviously suggest a patchwork of image processing has taken place. So I don't know if I trust a former FBI agent or not when we know the FBI is actively engaged in a UFO cover-up. So I certainly wouldn't expect them to say that this is a real, honest-to-God alien base. Uh, but Lee Spiegel did a, some good research into this area and closing off his article, he left open the possibility that this was, in fact, genuine. As he says, in the end, we're left with a variety of theories to explain the Malibu anomaly, a.k.a. Sycamore Knoll. Will the UFO alien underwater base proponents be eventually proven right, leaving geologists in the deep blue dust scratching their heads and wondering how they got it all wrong? So Lee Spiegel was actually going to appear on Jimmy Church's show, Fade to Black, uh, but following the appearance of this article, in which came off as somewhat skeptical, uh, he was not on the show. Um, his appearance was canceled for some reason, and this led to a little bit of a dust-up that possibly there was a disagreement between Jimmy Church and Lee Spiegel, uh, both of whom deny this. But there was an article written by Jim Paris titled, Two UFO Guys Cross Lightsabers Over Underwater Alien Base. Uh, and uh, Lee Spiegel, in response to this article, writes, Sorry to disappoint, but there is no bitter feud shaping up here. <laughs> On the day that my piece was published, I sent it to Jimmy and fully expected him to confirm my appearance on his show. Instead, he emailed to let me know that he'd be discussing my story later that night. But when he didn't mention that he wanted me to join him, I knew that something wasn't quite right. Later that evening, I tuned into the show to discover Jimmy talking about how one-sided my article was and that my story placed too much emphasis on the idea that the underwater object may simply have been a natural geological formation. Lee Spiegel defends his viewpoint and writes, What I found in my research into the existence of the alleged Malibu UFO base was that there is no definitive evidence of that. It's more speculation and conjecture, i.e., the fact that there have been sightings of UFOs, USOs, in this area, or that this underwater object seems to be situated in a geographic region that's allegedly within the coordinates of military installations. Speculation is not evidence. My job, despite what I may personally believe, is to gather information from different sources and put that inform information into cohesive articles that offer different points of view to help readers decide for themselves which way the evidence leads them. That's exactly how I wrote my Malibu underwater object story, and I won't apologize to anyone out there who may be unhappy that I didn't more fully support the idea that we're dealing with a UFO alien base out there in the water. I went where the evidence took me, and I offered it up. 
If we all adhere to the mantra of go where the evidence leads you, this whole UFO alien issue will be much better off. And I agree. Yes, let's follow the evidence. And that's why I find these Google images so intriguing and why I find it interesting that some choose to look at the images where it doesn't show this tunnel and others choose to look at the images where they do. And I will say most of these images do show this tunnel. And if you look at this Malibu anomaly, it does look a little strange. Is it artificial? I mean, it's, it's hard to say for sure. But uh, I find it fascinating that it's right in the middle where there are so, so many of these UFO, USO reports. So let's go back to researcher Robert Stanley, because when this whole controversy hit the Internet and he saw that uh, the so-called Malibu anomaly that he discovered was going viral, he had a few words to say about it for sure. Uh, and as he says in an article that he published in 2015 titled, Who Discovered the So-Called Malibu UFO Base? Robert Stanley writes, I am certain that the U.S. Navy has known about the underwater structure entrance for quite a few decades, but has not reported it publicly. However, I was the first civilian to discover the strange site while using 2009 Google Maps. That's when I found what appears to be an ancient, artificial, underwater platform off the coast of Malibu, which made headlines around the world in 2014. Uh, he wrote that he believes it may very well be extraterrestrial in origin. As he writes, it was constructed by and for amphibious alien gods. And he speculates that this might be connected to all the strange ruins or alleged strange ruins that he found in the mountains of Malibu. Uh, but in a later article published in 2016, Robert Stanley uh, wrote a more skeptical viewpoint of the possibility of this being an active alien base and that he also finds some of the Google images suspect. As he says, Unfortunately, the digital images posted on the internet of what appear to be giant pillars holding up a massive roof to an entrance into the earth are actually erosion marks on a large cliff. The data on Google Earth is generated by vertical scans which create distortions in vertical objects when tilt is applied to the map. Uh, but he still admits that this formation does look strange. He says, the top of this formation is incredibly flat and it has some interesting features that do not appear on Google Earth. Uh, but he's absolutely not convinced that this is necessarily an alien base. Or is he? He's kind of apparently flip-flopped a little bit on this. But as he writes, unfortunately, these illusionary images and unsubstantiated claims continue to captivate the imagination of millions of people around the world. Hopefully my new article will set the record straight. Uh, and finally, he closes it off by saying, if there is a doorway to an underwater base in that area, there is no way the Navy wants the public or other military powers to see it. However, they may want to distract everyone's attention by digitally creating and promoting a mythical UFO base off the coast of Malibu. So yeah, I mean, this is just deepening the controversy here. Um, are we dealing with misinformation, disinformation, or unreliable Google images? It's very hard to say, uh, but we are still stuck with what appears to be an unusual structure off the Malibu coast. And it wasn't long before more people started to research it. More recently, in 2017, Rob Lowe and his two sons starred in a reality TV series called The Lowe Files. 
in which they investigated various paranormal and UFO claims, and they eventually tackled this subject, the Malibu anomaly, and uh, on August 8th, 2017, decided that they would go off the coast of Malibu and send down a little submersible submarine and see if they could find out whether this structure was artificial or not. And uh, they sent down this little uh, unmanned submarine, joining with scientists and with Chase Kloetsky, uh, a field investigator from the Mutual UFO Network, and sent down this submersible to photograph the anomaly. And first they explored the top of the structure, looking for any signs of artificial construction. And while they found that the surface was incredibly flat, they couldn't see any markings that definitively showed that this was artificially constructed. And next, they dive down to the front and the base of the anomaly. Unfortunately, visibility at that depth was almost nil. They couldn't really see much at all, even with bright lights. And uh, they were able to get images of what appeared to be the foot of one of these so-called pillars, as seen on Google Images but could not find any evidence that this was artificially built, artificially constructed. This was just a one or two day long operation, so it wasn't really given the time, money, and effort it deserved to fully make, I think, definitive conclusions as to the nature of this anomaly. But it was the first attempt, as far as I know, for anyone to send any type of submersible down there to check it out. Uh, unfortunately, the evidence, I think, is inconclusive. But MUFON, of course, joined the hunt. Uh, Chase Kloetsky was a part of this team, and she eventually wrote an article for MUFON along with Carrie McClure. And the title of the article was The Malibu Underwater Base Investigation as seen on the low files. And as uh, Chase Kloetsky and Kerry McClure write, the Malibu underwater alien base allegation has been under active investigation and research by many MUFON investigators for several years, starting as early as 2014. Actually, I was researching it well before 2014, all the way back in the late 1980s. I wish they would have contacted me. I could have given them quite a bit of information about the UFO reports in this area. Uh, but uh, Chase Koletsky did do some really interesting investigations. She contacted the nearby naval base, Port Wainimi, Point Magoo Naval Base, which is located just north of this area, and asked them if they were aware of the Malibu anomaly. Uh, she spoke with an officer who told her, of course, uh, they were absolutely aware of this underwater uh, uh, anomaly, or, or as they called it, underwater base rumors. And uh, they told her that it was not a base, but was the result of an earthquake thrust fault. But because of this, they keep the area under very close observation. And Chase Kletsky and MUFON researchers investigated the images provided by the low files investigation into this anomaly. And as uh, Kletsky writes, no evidence of an opening nor pillars were visible. There were no signs of typical man-made construction, as in straight lines, corners, or 90-degree angles. No machine markings were seen, and nothing was found that would indicate or allow suspicions of man-made artifacts or construction on the Sycamore Knoll. The scientific study and examination confirmed a natural geological formation that is consistent with the geological features of the California coastline. The final conclusion of the MUFON Special Assignment Team investigator, Chase Kloetsky, 
is that the Google satellite image of the alleged Malibu underwater alien military base is a natural thrust fault that features all of the expected characteristics of a geological formation in an appropriate area, such as the Doom and Santa Monica faults. The columns that are present in the images but do not actually exist are an artifact of the Google Earth satellite imaging construction process. Well, I'm not sure how they can definitively conclude that, especially when the Lowe investigation, the Rob Lowe investigation, was really done on a shoestring budget and was very brief and didn't have the technology to really pierce into the uh, visibility that was down there. So I am not sure that they can really conclude that this was artificial or not. So they concluded that this was a natural formation uh, anyway. And I'm honestly not so sure. I'm still on the fence about it for a few reasons. Uh, there was another interesting development in this case in 2014 when a ham radio operator in Malibu began to pick up strange radio signals, which were around 54 kilocycles on a 12 meter radio band. And according to him, they were steady as a rock and sounded like they were being transmitted from next door. And uh, he's an electronics and radio expert and a former Navy officer. Robert Stanley interviewed the gentleman and uh, these radio signals seem to be coming from exactly where this Malibu anomaly is located. So that's really interesting. Uh, here's where the story gets even stranger. Musician Merrill Fankhauser, who is probably best known for his hit song Wipeout, uh, a very successful musician, is also a part of this whole uh, story. I actually corresponded with Merrill Fankhauser because he uh, was had friends who would go down to the Malibu area and watch these lights coming in and out of the water. Merrill Fankhauser confirmed this to me, and so we stayed in correspondence for a little while. And after hearing about these strange radio signals, uh, he was also intrigued and eventually started incorporating them into his music. And he learned more about them. As Merrill Fankhauser says, the old World War II expert who recorded the signals had a range finder and zeroed in on where the signals were coming from, and it was exactly where the underwater structure was. He didn't even know it was there until he started investigating. He thought it was some Navy submarine activity at first. Merrill Fankhauser incorporated these strange beeping tones into his album Signals from Malibu and Messages from the Dome. And as Fankhauser writes, both have gotten a lot of radio play here and in Europe. Interesting thing, the sounds in Messages from the Dome shut down four radio stations. I'm having an engineer at Skywalker Ranch analyze the sounds. Uh, Fankhauser appeared on the Bob Hieronymus 21st Century Radio Show and uh, was on that show. Bob Hieronymus played some beeping tones provided by contactees. And as Merrill Fankhauser says, these tones were, quote, almost the same. Uh, Merrill Fankhauser appeared on a radio show to promote his album, and he also received some interesting information about this. As he says, I was on a big clear channel radio interview a year or so ago. We were talking about signals from Malibu, and I mentioned the underwater anomaly was not too far from Point Magoo Naval Base. The host knew somebody at the base and called them on the air. When asked about the anomaly and the strange radio signals, the guy at the base said, I can't talk about that, and hung up. Another clue that there might be more to this comes from researcher Ken Pfeiffer. 
uh, who said that this Malibu anomaly may actually be being used by the U.S. military. As Ken Pfeiffer says, I was told this by a high-ranking Navy command officer that there are three tunnels from Malibu to China Lake. He also told me that there is a city on the ocean floor with about 100 families. My relative held a Navy ranking just below Rear Admiral. Another account of a whistleblower uh, comes from a blogger on the internet known as Agent K, who wrote an article titled, Is There a USO Base Near Catalina Island? And as he writes in this article, I don't want to get too deep into the history of these sightings since researchers like Preston Dennett from MUFON have already done a fantastic job of that. His compilation of 50 of the best reports from the area is well worth the read and provides a great timeline of key events. But most interesting to me was that he interviewed a lady he calls Martha, who is a government whistleblower claiming that there is, in fact, an undersea base which uh, has not only humans, but ETs working along together. According to Agent K, and I quote, she continued on to state that the military is directly involved with these aliens, and they even have an underwater base in the San Pedro Basin near Catalina Island, where they work with the Greys. So the blogger, Agent K and Martha, uh, were talking and Martha asked him if he was familiar with the Greys. And he said, yes, of course. And asked her how she had obtained this information about this so-called undersea base. And she told him that she had heard it from different sources over the years and that it was all true and added that much of the information is available on the internet so it's safe to discuss. And uh, Agent K said that perhaps the alien presence would be disclosed to the public. And Martha, the whistleblower, said, Oh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. They've been here for a very long time. And as Agent K writes in his article, So here again we have a highly intelligent professional who was employed in a classified position with a military contractor who supports the theory of a possible USO base near Catalina Island in a very matter-of-fact manner. She's elderly, but still quite tech-savvy and with no apparent reason to make up a story like this. Martha strikes me as further confirmation of something decidedly extraterrestrial lurking in the waters off Long Beach. So ultimately, um, now that we've gathered all the information on this so-called Malibu anomaly, I'm still unable to decide personally whether it's artificial or not. I remain on the fence about it. I find it very intriguing, but I'm not really willing to say for sure that this is absolutely an undersea base or even a tunnel until we have further confirmation. I did write about this, of course, in my book, Undersea UFO Base, an in-depth investigation into USO activity in the Santa Catalina Channel. This book is all about all these, this Malibu anomaly, all the eyewitness reports, and all the information I've been able to gather over a period of well over two decades. Uh, pointing towards the possibility of an undersea UFO base in this area. And I think I've built a pretty compelling argument that something very unusual is going on here at the very least. So it is what it is. Maybe there's a base there. Maybe it isn't. Maybe this is a natural phenomena. Maybe it's artificially constructed. Even if it is natural, it could very well be a tunnel that is in use by ETs or even the U.S. government. At this point, I don't think we really have enough information to decide one way or the other. An interesting endnote to all of this comes again from Merrill Fankhauser, who contacted me again after learning some really interesting information. Merrill Fankhauser was in Las Vegas and had the opportunity to speak with a Native American elder this Native American gentleman was part of the Chumash 
tribe, the Gabrielano Native Americans, who have lived in this area off the Southern California coast uh, for thousands of years. And they have a long oral tradition stretching back. And the subject of UFOs came up leading to this Malibu anomaly. And the Native American elder told Merrill Fankhauser that yes, they are absolutely aware of this structure. And that according to their history, their oral tradition, this structure used to be above water when the sea level was much lower thousands of years ago and that they did not build it. So the implication was that this was in fact artificial. They said the sea level was so low that they could sit on the edge of this thing and fish off of it. So that's a little interesting data point which I thought would share which again points towards the possibility that this is in fact an undersea UFO base. I don't know. I will leave it to, for you to decide. I've presented the evidence as far as I know it. And yeah, I find it intriguing, but ultimately inconclusive. And I am eager to learn more for sure. Hopefully time will provide more answers. We will see. But that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I want to thank you once again for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep searching, keep looking for answers, and most importantly, keep having fun.